We give honor to God the Father, to Jesus Christ the Son, and to the precious Holy Ghost. Uh, thank God for another day. Another day allowed us to come out to read and study His Word. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. It's good to have you. Good to see you. For those that are on Zoom, those that are on their way, God bless each and every one of you. Uh, we left off <clears throat> on last week, uh, still in Proverbs, Proverbs the 11th chapter, Proverbs the 11th chapter, uh, verse number 5, Proverbs 11, verse 5. It deals with, and it talks about a false balance and a just weight. Uh, we talked about it on last week how you're not supposed to cheat people out of anything. Somebody ought to say something. Amen. Uh, Amen. Uh, I was eating some chips on my way up here, and, and the potato chip, the bag, you know, nowadays they have more they have more air in them than they have chips. Amen. That's a false balance. That's a false weight. Yes, yes. And God don't like for us to cheat one another. Amen. We will, we will take off and finish up with through uh, Proverbs, the 11th chapter, verse 5, 6, 7, and 8. Let us repeat the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Proverbs, the 11th chapter, verse 5, 6, and 7. Not in this. Mm -hmm. Will the life of man by his expectation mm -hmm. praise and the hope of unjust man that perish and perish. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, 9, and 10. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. And hypocrite is his mouth destroyed his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. When it goes well with the righteous, it is enjoyed, and when the wicked perish, there is a sorrow. Mm -hmm. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exhausted, but it is overthrown mm -hmm. by the mouth of the wicked. He that is of wisdom is pit is the despise it. despises his neighbors but a man of understanding holding the peace a tablet a, ta a tail berry uh -huh. a tail berry a liar somebody that always yeah. spreading gossip oh gracious <laughs> <laughs> Let's just make it plain. <laughs> a a, a talebearer reveal secrets, mm -hmm. but he that is of a faithful for spirit conceive the matter. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let every heart say amen. 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 Here we deal with a false balance and a just weight. Uh, verse 5 says, <clears throat> The righteous are the perfect shall direct his way. Uh, Psalms, Psalms 37, Psalm 37 and verse 23 uh, through 28, it says the steps of a good man. Good man. I'm, I'm talking about a good person now. Yes. You know, whether it's a man or a woman, their steps are ordered by the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
That's a good person. A good person goes in the way that the Lord tell them to go. A good person do what the Lord tell them to do. And one thing about a good person, they enjoy doing what's right. Amen. Amen, somebody. I mean, we we all we all have grown up through through the years and as the scripture said, I once was young, but now I'm old. When I was young, when I was a child, I thought as a child. I spake as a child. I did child helping somebody. <laughs> well, we we didn't well, we didn't know no better now. We did some we did some foolish things. We did some childish things. Amen. Amen. But when we growed up, especially when we came into the Lord, the Lord ordered our step where we should walk, the way we should talk, and the way we should live. And one thing about when God ordered your step, you enjoy living a righteous life. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad. Somebody said, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> Thank you. So glad. Boy, when you look back over your life yes. and you see where God has brought you from. Mm. And and I, I declare, I declare, I don't think I was all that bad. Help me, somebody. I don't think I lived that bad of a life. But I'm glad when you look back over your life, you see where God has brought you from and how you have lived a holy and a righteous life, but you know it wasn't because of you yourself. God kept you. And you delight in God's ways. Amen? Amen. You don't mind getting up and going to church and staying in church all day long. Help me somebody. <laughs> we, 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 Hey, we've been broken now, but yeah. back in the day, yeah, yeah, back in the day, we stayed all day and all night. Yeah, we have no choice, no but, 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 but don't ask me to do it now. No, sir. Uh, you be here by yourself. <laughs> 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 you hold up the, hold up the earth, finger leave. <laughs> yeah, Lord, I, and, and, and I, for one myself, I don't go. We don't go like we used to. You know, you'll hear, you'll hear our program and stuff. And, and I often wonder sometimes, because I have seen it before I decide to make certain changes. When COVID came, COVID changed a lot of things. Amen. And it lets you realize what you miss or what you don't really need. You know. But then again, it took away something that you had, which you probably should still have, mm -hmm. that fellowship. Mm -hmm. Even with the fellowship with the saints, you know, we shouldn't put away with that. Fellowshipping with loved ones. Mm -hmm. But Pastor, I know everybody say what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You're right in one sense. Mm -hmm. They were going to do that anyway. COVID didn't do. Yeah, I mean, you have people that do it, but, 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 you know. They wasn't coming to church before COVID started. A lot of, a lot of people wasn't, but you do, you do, you did have that group that would come. But it do, it do make excuses for folks nowadays. Mm -hmm. yeah. It makes more of an excuse. Yeah. And, and even, even me, myself, sometimes, you know, you hear a certain program going on, you say, well, all the, all the, all the ride up there. And you go, well. <laughs> <We're around>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you'll make it you'll make an excuse real fast. Yeah. Look at what verse 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 six says. Proverbs eleven, verse six says, The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. Boy, if that is not a scripture that is so true. In verse 6, it simply means you'll be caught up in your own trick. When you try to when you try to do somebody else wrong, that old expression, if you dig one ditch, you better dig two. If you chop this earth, it just might be for you. That is a true saying. 
you know, because the righteousness, they, they are upright because of God. And God will deliver you whenever you go through something. Amen? Amen. But if you are if you are low down, no good for nothing, you trying to get back at somebody, or you trying to you trying to you trying to make things hard for somebody, you're gonna get caught up in your own trap. Amen. Proverbs, Proverbs 7 says, when a wicked man died, when a wicked man died, his expectation shall perish. When a wicked man die, he don't have any more hope. Only thing he got is the hope of the nation. And in hell where, where that will be eternal burning. Eternal death. But we who believe in God, we have a hope. We don't we don't end at four feet under. And that's what they do they doing four feet now. They're not doing six feet no more. <laughs> we, we we look we look forward to more than just four feet of dirt. We believe, as Jesus said, that he was gonna go away Amen. to prepare a place for us. Amen. Now, since he gone away, he has prepared a place for us. And that place is called heaven. We as Christians should believe when we leave earth down here, mm -hmm. we got a better home. Yes, Lord. That's the scripture tell us. We got a better place to live over in glory, over in heaven, where Jesus said, and the scripture said that the, the streets are paved with gold. Yeah. We, we were turning in here, and, 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 and Sister Mia said, what, what, what is that? It's a, it's a black square spot in the road where where they did a patch and I said that's a, that's a patch it's, it's, it's a patch you know you ride on certain roads and the, and the road got holes in them right. you can ride down I-20 Lord have mercy mm -hmm. they, they they just terrible I mean you might as well just ride on the side of the shoulder now <laughs> because it, it's so bad yeah. but 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 in heaven the streets are paved with gold mm -hmm. And not only that, they tell me in heaven, you got a mansion waiting for you. Mm. And everybody, everybody, uh, you go through stages in life where you, 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 you might have you came from a shack. You might have stayed in a little small house. I don't know about y'all, but we did. I did. <laughs> I remember didn't have running water. I did. <laughs> you had to hike the windows in the summertime. Yes. Gnats and flies all in it. You. You can go to sleep. If if you had a fan, you could put it in the window. But it was so hot, you know, in the in the summertime you put a fan in the winter. And in the in, in the wintertime, you used to have to put <laughs> new paper and, and, and seals and robot seals and robot uh, paper through the hole just to keep the cold air from coming in the house. Yeah. Amen, somebody. <laughs> you, you sure you ain't but sixty? Lord no, I, I, I ain't but sixty three. Oh, you're 63. I'm 63, yeah. Oh, praise the Lord. 63. And Lord knows some of the things we came through, those, those old houses. Help me, my Lord. Help me, my Lord. God bless us. Yes, he did. No running water. No running water. Well, the well was out the back door. Had to go to the toilet. The toilet was right out back behind it. You had to go to the outhouse. Yes, Lord. Fellow was talking about it yesterday, talking about that slop jaw. And, Ooh, and yes. Lord help us. God out. have brought us from a mighty <laughs> long way, somebody. Yes, and I thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but over in glory, <laughs> Lord knows. <laughs> Listen, when I got when I got about seven, eight years old, we moved in. We moved in our first house that had running water and a bathroom. Electric lights. Electric lights. Yes. Yeah. Those good old days. Ooh, we felt like the Jefferson. <laughs> Boy, we were moving on up. We were somebody then. Yeah. It's a blessing. It, it's a blessing. But thank God for what we went through. It'll make you appreciate Amen. the things you came through. But over in glory, mm. they got a mansion waiting for you. 
and, and we talk about it. We talk about it here. Like I said, you go through different stages of your life where you probably stay in a shack. You got a better house. You know, then you look at it the older you get and you probably didn't make as much money. So you can only afford certain things in life. But yet, this mansion is already paid for. You ain't got to worry about it. You ain't got to worry about paying no light bill. Help me, somebody. I took up. <laughs> well, took... You got to pay his bill. That's all. I... But, 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 D, don't, don't too many people want to go that way. <laughs> That's the, only, that's, the only, that's the only one you got to pay because Jesus has paid for it all. Mm -hmm. I, I, I took out my light bill. I took out my light bill. I looked at my light bill today and I said, hmm, I better go ahead and pay this one. Because the last couple of days I turned the air, <laughs> I turned the air conditioning on the last couple of days. Lord help her. You know that in summertime when you run the air conditioning off every day, they, they yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah just, just put it back in the mailbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lord, no, when, when, am I going to be able to pay this? Yeah. Yeah. But thanks yeah. be to God. Yes, sir. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. God take care yeah. of his people. And one thing for sure, over in glory, he got a mansion waiting for us. So we have hope when we leave here. But as verse 7 says, a wicked man died, his expectations shall perish. Don't nobody remember him? People be glad he be gone? But yet, we who remain, we who are righteous, the, the, the just man, he have hope. Amen? Look at verse, verse 8. Verse 7, I, I did want to say, verse 7 says, when a wicked man die, his, expect, his, his expectations shall perish, and the hope of the unjust man perish. And we as Christians, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Amen? Verse, verse 8 says, the righteousness, the righteous is delivered out of trouble. Anybody here ever been in, in trouble? Whether you whether you whether you inflicted the trouble on yourself, or whether you just got into trouble, one thing for sure about being right: the righteous is delivered out of trouble. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. Whatever kind of trouble you go through, aren't you glad that trouble don't last yes. always? Boy, when you come out of that trouble, you look back and thought you weren't going to make it. But you go, <laughs> you go look, look where he brought me from. Thought you weren't going to make it. Go to, go, to, go, to, go to Psalms 34. Psalms 34 and 19. Psalms 34, verse 19. What does it say? We go through a lot of things in life. Amen. And, and, and when you're trying to live right, mm -hmm. it seems like the people that are trying to do right, they always have a hard time. Amen. You take one step forward, it seems like you get knocked back five. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. It, it let, that, that lets you know you're going to go through some hard times. You're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. But God delivered you out of them all. Amen? Amen. We can truly say we, we didn't get ourselves out of the trouble. God, God is the one that delivered us out of all that we've been through. Go to Isaiah, the 54th chapter, verse 17. Isaiah, Isaiah 54 
and 19. Isaiah should be the next book over from Proverbs. Ecclesiastes, then you have Psalms of Solomon, then you have Isaiah, Isaiah 54 and 17. Isaiah 54 and verse 19. Did I say, did I say, what did I say? I'm sorry, 54, 17. 54, 17. 54, 17. A weapon that is formed against me, against thee, shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Now notice, as as the last verse that was saying, many many are the affliction of the righteous. Even though you're gonna go through a lot of things here in Isaiah, people will form weapons against you. People will set traps up for you. People will try to take you down. People on the job won't like you. They will try to get you fired. People will sit there and say bad things about you. But know for a fact, things will be formed against you, but they won't work. They won't prosper. You know, how many how many times have you seen your enemy do you wrong or try to set traps for you? But God. Somebody, somebody said, but God. But God made your enemies your footstool. Amen. 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 So no weapon that is formed against you, it, don't worry about it. It ain't gonna work. Well, I, how many times? Look at look at the next portion of that verse. In every tongue. How many times have people lied on you? How many times have people said some bad things about you? That shall rise against thee. But yet, out of them all, God delivered you from the hands of the enemy. Amen. What does Exodus, the 14th chapter? I'm going to get this one right. Exodus, the 14th chapter. Okay, charge it to my head, <laughs> not my heart. <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna call. I think I'm gonna call my my, my eye doctor tomorrow. I've been putting it on. Exodus the 14th chapter, verses 21. Exodus 14, 21 through 28. It deals with. Uh, Pharaoh Exodus 14 verses 21 through 28 and Moses stretched out his his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by the strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry land, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the, of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his ch chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of the fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the and the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its strength, 
when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. Somebody say amen. amen. God will deliver you from the hands of the enemy. Amen. Here in Exodus 14, 21 through 28, God delivered the children of Israel out of trouble, out of the hands of the Egyptians. Boy, I like, I like where, it said, where it said that they pursue in verse 23. When people are chasing, anybody ever been chased? Anybody, you ever had to run from your enemy? Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes sometimes you didn't want to fight. You think they said you, you, you got to know when to hold them and you got to know when to fold them. Yeah. It ain't nothing wrong with being scared to fight or to run. You can live to tell the story. You can live to see another day. Yeah. Now, uh, it, it's an old cliche. Uh, it won't come to me. Uh, a, a, a scared man. A brave man. Chicken. In, in other words, being brave and dying, you won't be able to tell the story. But a scared man, he'll live to be able to tell the story another day. He'll live, he'll live another day. Even though he's chicken, you can talk about me all you want, but I can tell the story. So even though people chase you, God will make your enemies leave you alone. Even when it comes in verse 25 where it said, and took off the, the chariot wheel that they drove them heavily. Here, Pharaoh was doing everything they can to try to catch up with God's people. Riding the chariot real hard to the wheel, come on. Y'all ever rode a bicycle and, and, or a tricycle and the wheel came off? Y'all don't know nothing about that. When we came up, we, we, had, we, had, we, had, we had the playmate bicycle or halfway we had to put them together the tri tricycle sometimes they had a they had a carter pin in between that held the tie on and if that carter pin got lost that wheel would come off and, and and you'd be going down the road doing like this trying to trying to ride the, <laughs> trying to ride the trying to ride the tricycle but God 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 took care of the Egyptian even though they were chasing the Israelite and they was driving the horses real hard and the Lord told Moses to stretch out his hand over the sea. Moses and the children of Israel crossed on dry land. But notice, the Egyptians, they was drowned by the water. God will take care of his people. Even though people are chasing behind him. Let's go back to Proverbs 11 and 9. Proverbs, Proverbs the 11th chapter. I thank God for sister. Thank God for sister Grill and Zoom. Uh, the uh, the things that she does. And she can pop up scriptures and stuff on it. She can post scripture. I mean, it's, 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 thank God for technology. Thank God for, for her managing it for us. Um, Proverbs, the 11th chapter, verse 9 says, says a hypocrite. Somebody say hypocrite. hypocrite. Anybody know what a hypocrite, what a hypocrite is? A hypocrite is a person who say one thing and do another they act like they holy or act like they always so right, but they do the opposite. Verse 9 says, a hypocrite with his mouth destroyed his neighbor. Hypocrite destroy people with their words. So we have to be careful. We as Christians, we have to be careful how we talk about folk. Amen. Amen, somebody. You know, have you ever, have you ever, have you ever? Got ready to speak something or say something bad about somebody, and you catch yourself. <laughs> yeah, yo, yo. But a hypocrite, they destroy 
people, their neighbor. They'll talk about they'll talk about their family. They they they'll sit here and be talking to just like me me and T sit here talking. They'll talk to T. Well, you know, Sister Neil do this and Sister Neil do that. And as soon as T walk off, I go over there and talk with Sister Neil. You know T said this. You know T do this. T ain't, T ain't do T. Yo, that's what a hypocrite do. They are busy about it. They'll go from one person and, and spread gossip with another person and just soon listen, listen. Be careful with people that brings you a bone because if they bring a bone to you, just know when they get through talking to you, they're going to go tell somebody else about you. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Yep, yep, gotcha. Hypocrites are like that. If they if they talking to you about somebody else, just know as soon as you leave them, they are talking about you. Amen. Verse 9 says, a, a, an hypocrite with his mouth destroyed <laughs> destroyed his neighbor. Who is his neighbor? His neighbor is the same people that he just got through talking to. Mm -hmm. But through knowledge, Shall the just be delivered? Like I said, be careful how you talk about folks. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Like I said, being in the word of God, knowing right from wrong, you'll know when to speak. Amen. Because you know sometimes I, I, I used I used I used the I used the uh analogy used to love Miss Miss Brown and, and she, you know she was a hundred years old. You know, people when they get older they you know they, they don't care what they say <laughs> when they say it, where they at. Look at her. She knows she sure is ugly. Oh gracious. Hey, you go like shh shh shh. You know, you know, <laughs> Chicken in here. <laughs> ain't no chicken in here. That, that, that's a good one. I met you that one day. <laughs> ain't no chicken here. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, when when the righteous person, they learn better and they know better. As I say, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. You know, the just and the righteous person, they know when to say something. And sometimes you catch yourself before you know it. Before you know it, you know, you'll catch yourself and you, you go, I, I'm finna say something. Thank God for knowledge. Yeah. Because but a lot of these folks that write, they still be, they still be talking. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they really do. Especially these church folks. Good. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, and, 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 but we need to get in the spirit more often as Christians. You know, we don't get in the spirit like we should. Because when you you know it's just like it's just like when uh when you bless the pastor you know God you know, you know God blessing you. Bless pastor, you when you when you consider when you consider when you consider when 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 the prophet went by and, and, and the woman was out collecting wood and 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 he went home with her and he told her to cook him a cake mm -hmm. and she said well I, I I I don't have that much flour I don't have that much oil. I just got enough just for me and my son. We go. I'm gonna cook a little cake for us. And we gonna die. Oh, gracious. That's all. Gracious. It was. It was a hard time. And 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 the prophet said, "Wait a minute. What did I tell you to do? Bless the preacher first. Bless the prophet first. Cook me a cake. Once once she was obedient mm -hmm. to taking care of God's prophet, mm -hmm. her barrels." Just ran over. That's right. And that's how God blesses us. Yes. He do blesses us when we do things yes. in obedience. Right. And out of his will. Right. Now, if we if we just do a thing just to get a blessing, Brother. you might be on a long line. Well, what I do for Home and Baptist Church is not, is not because I need a blessing. My Bible tells me when somebody Mm -hmm. It ain't for me. Mm -hmm. You got to bless somebody else, and that's what I do. Yeah, yeah. And, and we we should we should be a blessing to each other. Right, right. Yeah. 
but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Uh, remember in Daniel's the third chapter, Daniel, go to Daniel, Daniel the third chapter. Turn to the right. You turn to the right. Turn to the right of your Bible. It'll be about it'll be about middle ways between Proverbs and Malachi. It's one of the Daniel's one of the one of the minor what they call minor prophets. It's not it's not to say he was one of the little prophets or that his ministry wasn't that big, but they are known as one of the minor prophets. Yeah, Daniel the third chapter. Uh, if you know where Ezekiel, if you go by Ezekiel, if you go by Ezekiel and Hosea, it should be in between. Daniel is between Ezekiel and Hosea. Daniel the third chapter, verse twenty-eight. Daniel three and twenty-eight, and that that Daniel the third chapter is a is a whole whole chapter full. Of, what does verse twenty-eight say? Then Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, "Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has set his patience and delivered his servants that were trusted in him, and has saved the king's word." Mm -hmm. See, see, through knowledge, the just will be delivered. Mm -hmm. He delivered Daniel. Well, he delivered. He delivered. He delivered uh, Daniel from the lions' den. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He. He, he delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of the fiery furnace mm -hmm. to the fact whereas Nebuchadnezzar realized that God blessed him and he didn't want the people to worship nobody else but mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar, uh, ne nobody but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego God. You, know, you can worship any kind of other gods you want to, but he made a, de a, de a, degree, a decree that they shouldn't worship no other God but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God. Because he realized it was God that delivered them out of his hand. Mm -hmm. And that they should serve only that God. And one thing about he realized, he said that, he said, he said, and have changed the king's word. God will change people's words when they put bad words on you. People talk bad about you, mm -hmm. but God will change their words. Yes. In Daniel's the sixth chapter, verses one through twenty-eight, uh, we're gonna highlight. We'll highlight verse twenty-seven. Daniel, Daniel six one through twenty-eight, but we'll highlight verse twenty-seven. Daniel the sixth chapter, verse twenty-seven. What does it say? Mm -hmm. See, God will deliver you. He'll rescue you. Not only rescue you, but he'll work signs and wonders. People be <clears throat> people be seeing God blessing you. They see the signs and they be wondering how you how you do this, how you do that. God will God will show signs and wonders and he'll deliver you out of the hands of the enemy. Just like he delivered Daniel from the lion's den. Amen. <clears throat> in Acts the twelfth chapter, verses one through nineteen. In Acts twelve, uh, I like I like this particular passage of scripture. Acts the twelfth chapter, verses one through. 19, God sent an angel to deliver uh, Peter. When Peter, when Peter was bound in a Roman jail, <coughs> God delivered him. 
in Acts 12 and 1. Verses 1 through 19, he sent an angel uh, to free up Peter when he was bound. And he was planning on, he was planning on, they was planning on holding Peter until Easter in verse 4. And that's that's the only place you'll find Easter in the Bible. You know, we celebrate, <laughs> we, we celebrate Easter, verse 4, <clears throat> verse 4 of chapter 12 of Acts, Acts 12 and 4. They were planning on holding Peter. Until, until Easter was over with, <clears throat> or until after, after the resurrection. But an angel of the Lord freed Peter in verses 7 through 19. And that's how God, God will deliver his people. He, he'll take care of you. Let's go back to Proverbs 11th chapter. Proverbs 11th chapter, verse 10 through 31. It deals with rejoicing with the righteous. Now that's something we as Christians should do. We should learn how to, you know, enjoy one another. Enjoy people who are right. In this country, this world is so divided right now. Yes, Lord. Have you noticed how you got half of the country is trying to do what's right, but you got the other half, they are trying to do anything they can or anything they want to so they can be in power. Mm -hmm. It's a shame that people will follow foolishness. <laughs> But we should rejoice when people are doing right thing. Amen. Look at what verse 10 says. Verse 10 says, when it goes well with the righteous. So when somebody else is doing good, you shouldn't be hating on them. Yeah, right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Who, who, who do Big Sam think he is? He, got, he got, a new, got a new truck out there. I know he's having a hard time with it. He can't even pay a light bill. That way, they way people, you know, hypocrites and stuff, they talk. If you see D get a new truck or a new house or new something, you ought to rejoice with him. I hear you, D. God has God has abundantly, abundantly blessed you. I can't wait till he bless me. Come on, Come on D. Let me, let me rub up against you. Let me rub up against you get some of that blessing you got, D. That's what we should do. Amen. amen, amen. We should rejoice and be glad when other people make it up. When it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices. The whole city should be glad. Amen? Mm -hmm. you know, but we as a people, we have a tendency to want to bring other people down. Yes. Uh, you know, and I, it, should be, it should be that way in this whole country. This country is called the United States of America. Amen. That, means, that means that it's not a white America. It's not a black America. But it's supposed to be a country with different nationality. And we all should be trying to help one another. Amen. You know, we got we got people coming from other countries trying to come to this country to have and make a better life. Amen. Amen. Now we for for a long time as a people, we have had to struggle along the way. Yes. But thanks be to God, some of our people made it up. Some of our people thought that we could have a better day. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't stop there. We should keep on praying and thanking God for blessing us and bringing us from a mighty long way. But yet, we should take those people that are trying to come over here for a better life. We should reach out to them and lend them a helping hand. Amen. But it's sad. It's sad that so many people, you know, say, well, they should come over here the right way. We didn't come over here the right way. We were, we were, we were brought over here. Amen. Our people, our people, our people that come over here volunteer. And even when, even when, even when, even when the when the when the people got over here, they took over the country Amen. because there were people here before they got here. 
So when 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 the righteous people, as the scripture said, when it when it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices. You know, we ought to rejoice with one another. We ought to be glad to see other people being blessed. We ought to we ought to be glad when somebody make it up to the top. And when a person make it up, especially in society, in 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 the business world, when they make it to the top, they should reach down and try to help somebody else along the way. Amen. Verse ten, verse eleven, verse verse eleven says, "By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted." Like I say, so when 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 the righteous person is being blessed, God's favor is shown upon the righteous. Right. Amen. Amen. And and we we as a community, we shouldn't talk about them. We should know that our blessing is on the way. Yes. If God bless you, I know He can bless me too. Amen. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown. By the mouth of the wicked. Somebody said, Lord have, Lord have mercy. You have seen where so many people uh, try to take down this country, try to take down different group of people with their mouth. Yep. It's sad. Mm -hmm. uh, another, another, another bit of history. When, when Dr. Martin Luther King, when they was marching, they wasn't trying to tear the city down. They was being beat, and 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 and, and dogs set on them, and 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 and, and water holes was, was sprayed on them. But they was trying to fight for equality, so everybody could have a better life. Yes. But yet you have a group of people that always want to keep folks down. Yes. By the blessing of the upright, the city. Is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. Isn't that what we're going through today? Yes. Isn't that what, what happened in 2020? The mouth of the wicked was trying to overthrow the government. Yes. Verse 12 says, He that is void of wisdom. So if a, if a, if a person don't have wisdom, if a, if a person is not wise, guess what? He despised his neighbor. Y'all, y'all don't hate nobody, do you? Y'all, y'all don't despise nobody. You know, you got some folk that that just hate folk just because they don't like them. I can't stand them. Why? What they do to you? Nothing. I just don't like the way they look. Just get on my nerve every time you look around. She doing this. She doing that. She do too much. Can't stand them. He that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor. But a man of understanding holdeth his peace. So there, there we go again. You know, a man of understanding, a person of understanding, you know when to speak up and you would you know when to hold your peace. You know, you sometimes sometimes you might say something, but you know, sometimes you you'll learn you'll learn to bite your tongue. Amen. Amen. But a man of understanding holds his peace. Verse 13 says, A tail barrier. A tail barrier. Reveal it. Secrets. Listen, folks. Don't ever go to anybody with your business. And the very first thing you say, listen, I got something to tell you, but don't tell nobody else. <laughs> That's the last thing you, if you say that, just know beyond the shadow of a doubt, just as soon as you get through telling it, they're going to run a tell somebody. Word for word. Yeah, yeah. What that was Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. You ain't heard it from me, cause I ain't the one to gossip. <laughs> but but boy, then they start telling all your business. Listen, 
If you got a problem, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them right there. Amen. God won't tell nobody about your problem. But a tail barrier, boy, they'll tell all of your secrets. You remember the woman, the woman that Jesus had a conversation with. She ran back to town and said, here's a man that told me all that I had done. Jesus said, where's your husband? The woman said, well, I, I don't have one. Jesus said, you said it right. You have had five. And the one you're with now. Hot on my Ain't yours. But she went back and told everybody about Jesus. Here's a man that told me everything that I have done. Can't he be the Savior? But boy, you better, you better, you better, better be careful who you tell your business to. I'm going to tell Barry. Tell, tell everything. But he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Now, you know, we as pastors, we as preachers, uh, we, 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 we talk to a lot of people. We, we deal with a lot of people that go through stuff. And we don't supposed to tell folk business. And, and truth be told, sometimes we do use people life story in our message yeah. or even with somebody else but we won't tell who it is mm -hmm. you know we laugh and joke about it you know saying you know preacher can't hold they can't hold water they just like a broken down refrigerator they tell everything <laughs> but <laughs> you know some folk some folk can't hold water oh, yeah. they, they tell all your business mm -hmm. so you have to be careful who you tell your business to Lord have mercy. Somebody said, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. With all of these social media, mm -hmm. you have to be careful nowadays uh, because you know people put people put a lot of their business on 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 different social media, and then it'll come back to haunt you. Amen. Mm -hmm. They tell very revealed secret, but he that is a fake spirit conceal it the matter if I had time I I, I go through I go through uh, Leviticus the 19th chapter uh, my time my time is running out go to Leviticus 19 and 16 let's let's see uh, it, 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 we might I, I might be able to close on that what did I say Leviticus Leviticus 19, Leviticus 19 and 16. Yep, you shouldn't do what? Quit running from folks to folks, house to house. Quit, quit running and telling, telling, telling other folk business. Yeah. Christian God people shouldn't be that way. They bad, they? Yeah, they, 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 they bad. They, they, they're running. They're running to tell all of your business. Just, just spread slander. They, and, and, and the bad thing about it, they'll add, they'll add some to it. I think we'll stop there and we'll we'll start at we'll, we'll, we'll start at verse 14 Start, we'll start at verse we'll start at verse 14 
Thank God for all of those that are on Zoom. Thank God for those who took out time to uh, out of your busy schedule to come out today. If you have anything, any concerns that you would like to share with us? I got a question, Pastor. Say it on. Okay. I know uh, verse 13, we were talking about, you know, you're not supposed to reveal secrets or whatever. But if somebody came to you and confessed to a murder or something like that, how do you handle situations like that? You know, people confess, you like, like the priests and all of that, I guess they, how? Good question. It, it, it is hard. I always tell folks. If you don't want, listen, I had a friend, I had a friend of mine, and he was married, and he used to cheat on his wife, and I said, listen, if she come up here and ask me, I'm going to tell it, because I can't lie. Okay. I refuse to lie. And I said, now, I don't care where you're going or what you're finna do. I don't want to know. Just tell me what you want me to tell her. That's all I want to know. But I wonder, how do those priests handle, like a priest, you know, somebody come to you confessing, and then, are they supposed to tell the priest? It's... Priest can't. Yes, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it is a hard, it is a hard situation to be in. Because we do supposed to, we supposed to be held to a high standard in certain areas. Oh, Hammers, don't tell Pastor Neil. But but that's murder though. Like that's. I'm I'm I'm, I'm uh, Pastor. I'm gonna say this to um to Kay. <laughs> um, there's a difference between a tale bearer or a gossip or somebody who has to tell everything they know, than a person trying to help somebody in the situation. The two things are just not the same. You know, when somebody comes to you and and they say out loud, um, you know, some, some special information that's going on between the two of them and you just feel you got to tell everybody you know, that's a tale bearer. But if someone comes to you and they confess the murder and um, you feel that they are dangerous to the society, that is not a tale bearer. You are simply intervening um, to keep someone from getting hurt. But to her point, if the police came and asked the priest, should he tell well, priest, 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 that's that's a doctrine thing. That's not a biblical thing. That is the doctrine of the Catholic Church. And according to the doctrine of the Catholic Church, they are held to not share that. That is not biblical. That is simply like uh, the rituals and routines of how Catholics work. Um yeah. So that's not the same either. That's that's a different circumstance. So you know, if 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 you if they said that same thing to um, you or I, K, we, mm -hmm. we and we know about it. We got to say something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know, it's like it's the sanctity of marriage. The same that that's a that's a doctrine that is not that's not Christianity. That's not the Bible. That's not Jesus. You know, when you talk about tail bearers. Somebody walks up to you and say everything that they need to say. Um, as soon as somebody tells you, you, go run and tell somebody else. Okay, come on now. That's that's just too much. But you know, if somebody comes to you and they give you something, and you realize somebody is going to be harmed. That's a that's a totally different situation. Gotcha. That's I was wondering how in the world they handle situation. Okay. Yeah, you know, because sometimes when we do, it's like with the the kids in school. Um, you know, you have to kind of put a balance on what you consider to be snitching. Every time somebody, you know, says something in class, you don't go tell the teacher every time they say something. But if you see somebody with a knife in their bag, then sweetheart, you need to come tell somebody because somebody's about to get hurt. Mm -hmm. And you you see what I'm saying? When, yeah. when, when you get to a point where somebody's life is in jeopardy and in danger, but when you're dealing with tail bearers, they're just running around, just sharing information because they want to be the first person that said it. It's, yeah. it's not it's not to protect it's not to help it that you know when people come and share gossip with you how does that help anybody how does that you know keep somebody from getting hurt 
But when you get information about, um, you know, something that could cause some life changing harm and you hold on to it, then you become liable if something happens. Okay. Yeah. Now, 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 Sister Grill, I'm gonna close on this one because okay. when, when when I came when I came up and the teacher used to go up to the office to get get our cookies because they sold mm -hmm. like chocolate cookies, mm -hmm. and, and the teacher would put the smart and the quiet student in charge so they and could take names and write them on the board. <laughs> Listen, we took name and we told on everybody. <laughs> the one you didn't like. Yeah, the one you did Y'all ain't right. But it, it is it is a good point. It is a good question. And and a good point taken, as Sister Grill said, if it's something that will harm somebody, you know. The, 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 the saying that they have now they hear something say something so it is it is something to think to think about uh, but just going out spreading gossip just like I say so you could be the first one to sit there and, and like you're a news broadcaster that's that's another story give us our closing prayer sister Grill. First of all, good evening to everyone that I have not spoken to. Let us bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for today and all that have lived to see it. We bless you. We thank you and we bless you for the opportunity for us to sit here and share in God's word so that we can help us to become better Christians so that we can lead more people to you. Father God, as we go through this week, I, I ask that something that we have done or said here tonight helps us to be able to grow your kingdom because there are many people that are lost in this world and they need some salvation. And if we can just touch one small soul, um, we feel that our work is not in vain. We thank you for the pastor and for all of those who are dedicated to this ministry. These and all of the blessings I ask in the name of our son, Jesus, I ask, pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you. We love you. Y'all have a blessed week. Enjoy the rest of the week.